Yes, the question is what kind of predictive power comes from reverse engineering? I'll give you a couple of examples. Say in the education system, you would expect that there would be a very strong contrast between uh, cognitive abilities that our ancestors had a chance to exercise in a hunting and gathering environment and those that are much more recent inventions and dependent on agricultural civilizations. I already alluded to one, namely uh, reading versus spoken language. It's not a trivial example because many parts of the country have been taken over by a philosophy of reading instruction called whole language, which maintains that children can learn to read in the same way they learn to talk. Namely, if you just immerse them, you laugh, but the state of California adopted the system and watched its reading scores plummet to the bottom of, of the uh, nation. This is exactly what you would, what you would predict and what had been predict, predicted from a uh, reverse engineering evolutionary uh, perspective, which said reading was only invented by the Canaanites a couple of thousand years ago in one part of the world. There's no way that the circuitry of the brain could have evolved to take account of it. You're not going to teach a kid to read unless you uh, go through some drill, some practice, some unnatural activities, quite unlike spoken language. Math education, the same uh, scandal is being played out where uh, there's a philosophy of math education that says that if you throw kids together and let them solve problems while interacting socially, they'll rediscover the 2,000-year history of Western mathematics. This is, it's based on, you know, a little nugget of truth, namely that we, we do have a sense of number and that children display it even in the crib, but this is very different from the kind of mathematical reasoning that depends on written symbols and calculations and so on. So that, that would be one example. Another would be in psychopathology to say that if we have complex neural systems dedicated to particular emotions like anxiety and depression, there may be circumstances in which those responses are actually um, that treating them directly with drugs may not always be the best thing in terms of having a person come to grips with uh, decisions, major decisions in their life, that there may be times in which some anxiety, some depression is actually a, a good thing. In the same way that a uh, physician has to distinguish between reactions of the body that are defenses of the body against invaders and those that are uh, harmful, in psychiatry we probably have to distinguish more between uh, mental reactions that, however unpleasant, may be uh, adaptive in terms of motivating us to make hard decisions and those that really are maladaptive. So those would be two. two.